The Fantasy Edge with Richard Seville and Dennis Sosick. Hello and welcome to the Fantasy Edge. I am Richard Seville, Fantasy Six Pack .net, and joining me shortly, as always, Dennis Sosick, also of Fantasy Six Pack .net, bringing you uh, the waiver, uh, the waiver pile. Actually, it's quite a waiver pile this week for uh, Week Five, and uh, and we're into October now, and uh, we're actually at halftime in the uh, Monday Night Football, and the Chargers uh, lead the. Well, the Raiders just can't seem to move the ball at the moment, but it's 21 nothing for the uh, Chargers. Three touchdown passes by Justin Herbert doing his thing, and uh, Jerry Cook with a touchdown. I think another guy called Parham touchdown. And Austin Eckler's got a touchdown, so fantasy happening, happiness on the Chargers side of matters, but uh, not so for the Raiders. Maybe things will change in the second half, uh, halftime adjustments. Hi, Dennis. How's it going, man? Good. How are you doing, Richard? Oh, good. Um, just, uh, last week, now last week, and I wanted to clear this up, is that it, right at the end of the show, um, uh, I noticed this just, just after, cause we were getting near the end of the podcast and I was cutting things, but I kind of cut you off and we, you were talking about Ben Roethlisberger and things aren't going so great. I mean, that lost, he just came off that loss to uh, the Bengals and then, uh, this weekend, uh, again, things didn't go so great for the, for the Steelers against the Packers. Um, they just couldn't couldn't keep up. Uh, let's talk about Ben Roethlisberger for a minute. And uh, and you started to mention that you know it's it's look like it looking like. Uh, I mean, he looked injured at the end of the game too. I think he's got some sort of. Well, he's always he's always getting dinged up though. But I I think it's starting to take its toll as you as you mentioned. Yeah, I think that offensive line is uh, is horrible, and he's going to get beat up all year. I mean, if he survives the year, I'd be surprised because he's getting beat up every game. Uh, he can't really throw the ball deep anymore. So, you know, the only weapons to me is Harris, who's uh, you know he's a PPR monster because all he could do is dump the ball. And Deontay Johnson, he throws a little slants, little drop offs to him too. Um, you know, Juju is not anything in fantasy anymore. Claypool's hurt, so. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'd be surprised if Ben makes it. I don't want him or anybody really, but Harris and maybe Deontay Johnson on my fantasy team. Wow, he's been checking down to Harris almost regularly now. Yeah, that's all you could do. He has no time and he can't throw deep, so he's stumping the ball off and hopefully he makes plays. I mean, it makes Najee Harris, uh, owners quite happy, but not owners of, well, I don't know. He's still, he's still finding Deontay Johnson. But uh, but you're right about Juju and uh, Chase Claypool. Of course, Chase Claypool was uh, was out this weekend, but he should be back. But um, what do you think the solution is? I mean, I mean the the offensive line does need to gel. You're right about that. Yeah, I mean it, you have to give different play calling, but I mean you know the defense isn't playing up to par. They haven't been dominant like they were in years past, so they don't have that advantage either. So they're yeah, they're, I'd be surprised if they're a 500 team this year. No, I think TJ Watt was out. Was he? Was he? Oh, out? he played. Was he playing? Yeah. yeah I think I maybe the so. previous week he was out. Yeah. Previous week. Yeah. He's a monster and he's a phenomenal football player. Yeah. But, uh, he's okay this time. Um, let's yeah. get into the, uh, news. A uh, couple of serious injuries. Uh, one turning out to be not so serious is this first one is Joe Mixon was considered week to week, but I looked a little bit later on and it looks like Mixon is now day to day. So, um, I think we still pick up Samaje Perrin, right? Samaje Yeah, Perrine. I think you have to just as a, as a fallback option, but me hasn't been that impressive, but. Based on volume, I mean, someone's going to have to get the ball in the backfield. And he runs, uh, and he's adequate. He's somebody that can, you know, get you where you're going, but not, not that a game breaker, but, you know, rookie Chris Evans is probably going to be, uh, you know, getting some snaps as well. And he's nothing special. So it's a big loss in their lineup. Yeah. I, you know? uh, I've always, you know, I've kind of shied away from, um, Joe Mixon in the past, but, uh, he's been pretty effective when he's on the field. I mean, he's, he's, uh, he, well, I mean, in week one, he had the, he was the top RB finisher, uh, 29th in week two, 26th, three, and, uh, this weekend against the Jaguars, he was 18th with 13 fantasy, uh, pardon me, I'm gonna go by half PPR, 
uh, 13 fantasy points in week four, but uh, status uncertain. The, his, their next next game is against Green Bay. Um, I don't know about that game script. How do you feel about that? Uh, you know, Bengals, Bengals hosting the Packers. What do you think of that game yeah. script? I think that well, the Packers run defense is horrible, so this is missing a good matchup to show his talents. I mean, he, he's a great when he's on the field, but the key is him to be on the field. And you know, coming into the season, he was getting picked in the second round. And I, I figured he would get a lot more uh, pass catching ability, especially with uh, Gio Bernard not there anymore. So I figured he he get more targets in, in the passing game, but. He hasn't really done that much either in the passing game, which is kind of disappointing. But hopefully he can play. I, I don't think he's going to play this week and probably come back the following week. But, um, you know, if he had a chance to play his Packers run defense, I'm, I'd get him back in the lineup right away. Just as a side note, uh, in deeper leagues, uh, Chris Evans is the is the next running back down from Samaji Piran. For, for your information, no need to pick him up, but uh, uh, he is just to uh, pass that along. Um, David Montgomery, uh, apparently avoided a, a torn ACL. We don't know the status of him, apparently on Wednesday. We're going to find out a little bit more about what, what's happening with him. Obviously, Damian Williams, Dennis is the guy that will be the hot pickup. And, uh, I think this is, this is one of those cases where I think you, um, uh, err on the side of, of blowing all your fab on, right. on Damian Williams. I think, I think, I think, I think this is one of those cases where a hundred percent fab goes on him. If you, whatever you've got, just throw it, throw it at it. See what, see if you can get him. Would yeah. You say? He's, cause he's dealing with a quad injury himself. So you gotta make sure he's going to be playing next week. Um, and if he's not, then I mean, the then next- they got a rookie. Yeah, Khalil Herbert, I guess, is, uh, he did well in preseason, but he hasn't done much in regular season. So I keep your eyes on I mean, him. He did, he did, I mean, he's a good back. I mean, he did well in Kansas City and, uh, he played well when, you know, from Montgomery went out. And so, I mean, he's a good pickup. I don't know if I would, um, put my whole fab on it, but it's a good pickup. Plus, I, you know, if he's out, if Montgomery's out for several weeks, uh, don't forget about Tree Cohen. He's, he's coming back in week seven. So he may be a sneaky pickup as well. Right, so uh, two sneaky pickups. If you don't manage, if you're if you haven't got enough fab for Damian Williams, obviously Damian Williams has to be the guy first. But um, but you're but you're right about that. He's he's a bit banged up himself. So uh, so picking up Khalil Herbert, yeah, and uh, and even stashing Terry Cohn is, uh, is a prudent thing. Although I, you know, th- Damian Williams would be a, would be the number one back if David Montgomery was playing. You have to remember these backs aren't as like everyone thinks that that the backup back is going to be like this is the thing that like a guy like alexander madison he comes in and he's almost a carbon copy of of dalvin cook it's just because the the vikings have such great depth at that position i mean they purposely wanted uh you know a a carbon copy of uh, dalvin cook and they've got it Uh, so don't expect uh every back that that is a handcuff to to do what Alexander Madison can do is what I'm trying to say to people. Would you not agree? I 100% agree. Yeah, there are backups for a reason. Yep. <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, DJ Chark. Uh, it's been placed on IR. He's out for the season. Ah, that's kind of a big loss because, uh, DJ Shark is one of those, uh, middle rounders that, you know, and I think a lot of people do spend draft capital on him. I think there was a bit of expectation that Trevor Lawrence would find him, but, uh, you know, and this is why I disagreed with you about LaVisca Chenault, and I still like LaVisca Chenault. He had not a bad game. Oh, he had a very uh, good game. Yeah, I was, maybe I was jumping the gun too much on him because he, uh, I hope uh, fantasy owners out there didn't uh, jump the gun and, and do that because he played well. He had six or seven targets for 99 yards. He looked great out there. Now he's going to have more opportunity with Shark on. Um, you know, him and uh, Chenault and Marvin Jones will be the two I mean, pass catchers for Lawrence, and yeah, you know, with their negative game trips, they're going to be in every. Uh, he could be a he could be a weapon for fantasy managers. Hopefully, he's, make sure you check on the waiver wire if he's still available. Yeah, and you mentioned Marvin Jones there, a big upgrade for him, obviously. Oh, uh, absolutely, yeah. And uh, and even uh, there's this guy called Tyron Johnson who might be uh, who might start to yeah, get in sneaky. there. He's a sneaky pickup too, so um, we'll, we'll we'll see how that all works out. But overall, we're, we're still waiting for 
I mean, you might have to wait a while for uh, Trevor Lawrence because that's where everything starts and ends with uh, with your pass catchers, right? Is with yeah. Trevor Lawrence, and he's off to a bit of a rocky start, but uh, definitely the guy uh, it, that you want is uh, Marvin Jones to uh, to start. I think he becomes startable every now. Right next up, what else we got in the news? Uh, oh yeah. Thank you. Tyson Williams, uh, I've actually got him in my drop category. I should choose another guy because he's in the news. <laughs> but, uh, but he was, uh, he wasn't, uh, he didn't start this week. He was actually yeah, a healthy weird. scratch. But yeah, that's a weird situation. I don't know what he did, who he did it to, but he got in there, got in the doghouse with, in the, with the Ravens and he was inactive last week and his stock is lower than low now. I'm not sure what happened, but then the Davis Murray stepped in, got a touchdown. They brought Le'Veon Bell back from the dead, and him and Devontae Freeman were the backups, which I don't care about those two. But uh, the team is Murray. I, you know, if he's available, I make sure I grab him. He's going to get the ball there. So I'll, uh, he's in my drop box. Uh, but I'll pick it. I'll pick another guy to drop since uh, since we discussed him in the news. It was a bit, a bit of my bad there because uh, usually when it comes to uh, you know I try not to uh, you know have a little more variety than that. But I didn't notice that. Uh, <laughs> That I had Tyson Williams in the news, but he is a guy you can drop to. But I'll pick yeah, another. Sir. I'll pick yeah. another drop on the fly when we get to that segment in the podcast. Um, I did not not much other real news to uh, talk about, except except one more thing that I'd like to talk about before we get into the uh, waivers and whatnot. Um, is the game last night? Um, Brady and Mac Jones. You know what? Mac Jones outplayed Brady, I think. Absolutely. And I was kind of, this was kind of a thing where, I know last week you were kind of hoping that Brady would stick it to, and I was kind of thinking the same thing, but you know what? I started to change my mind. I was sort of, I was sort of cheering on the Patriots. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> I, I kind of, I, I don't know. I turned around and I, I wanted Belichick to win because, well, because they were, because the Patriots were sort of the underdog, were the underdog, clearly the underdog. At home, underdogs, and they nearly won the game. I was, I was actually gutted they didn't get the field goal. And I don't know what it is, but there's something about. I think I could feel a bit of negativity for Brady's ego. That's kind of getting me. I'm a little sour, getting sour on Brady's ego. I think it's bigger than Belichick's ego. <laughs> yeah, those two are. Uh... <laughs> <clears throat> They're fighting for the the biggest ego in the world right now. But yeah, that was a crazy game. Yeah, I don't know what Belichick. You know, he's obviously he sees he saw Brady every day in practice, and he knows how to find him. That whole you know tree coaching tree of Belichick and you know Brian Flores in Miami, Matt Patricia when he was in Detroit. Yeah, you know, they they held uh, Brady down. I mean, they know what to do uh, to him to, to rattle him, and he doesn't play well when they plays against them. So. And give, you know, kudos to Belichick. I mean, he had Brady's number. And, yeah, Matt Jones outplayed him, definitely. I mean, they got lucky at the end because he missed their field goal. But, but you know what would happen, though, is they feel like it went through and Brady would have, would have led him to a touchdown and won. But and the way Brady's lucky sometimes. But we'll never know, I guess. Well, I guess we will not know. But uh, and, and there was some criticism of whether or not uh, Belichick, because of the rain and uh, was it Nick Folk kicker, they yeah. could have, could have, should have tried to get a little closer for him because it was just one of those days. It was too bad it was a, a, a rainy night at Foxborough, but it's still an enjoyable game. I really enjoyed the game. I mean, the, the atmosphere of it. And I was actually surprised. The the fans, um, Brady is not bigger than the Patriots, and the fans booed him when he came out. Right, that was awesome. They they, awesome. Cheer, they they cheered him in pregame, which that's I oh, guess yeah. that's they, a, that's a bit yeah, different. But, his name. Yeah, but, but once the game started, it was it was more like uh, two. Yeah, we're done with you now. We gave you your your applause. Now you're done. Now you're the opposition. Yeah, yep. we're gonna beat you every time you have the ball. But uh, they did. They did. But I think the fans will be just as happy because when when the time comes for Brady to finally hang it up, whenever that is, um, they'll make him a Patriot for for a day. You know though. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. He should. I think he wants to play to fifty. So who knows? <laughs> How many years? Is that, six years he's got to do to get there. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's yeah, he's forty four now. Yeah. Six more years. I don't know if he could do that, but I don't know. I don't even. You never know. know. You never know about him though. He's the one person I probably could do it. Uh, who's the guy I'm trying to think of? George Blanda. Yeah. Blanda. Yeah. Yeah. He so, did. He quarterback. Aim. Was a kicker too, so that's right, George Blanda. Let me just look him up. Well, old was he? Uh, 
I think he holds the record, right? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's, uh, yeah, I think it's him, yeah. George Bland, uh, played, uh, see, see, can't believe it, he actually played with Madden. This guy's, like, from the 40s. Um, <laughs> yeah, George Bland, uh, people, yeah, if you, if you want to, uh, look up George Bland, you'll find a, a truly amazing player. He's in the Hall of Fame, of course. Um, played right till 1975. So he's, uh, so, I don't, it's kind of amazing, actually. He's, he died in 2010. What a shame. George Blanda, uh, somebody. Anyways, getting sidetracked with, with, uh, <laughs> with old, old, but I, I like the old stars. I like, you know, like Johnny Unitas. Yeah, the old, yeah. Whereas, as you flip on, you can actually hit the quarterback. Yeah. Was, yeah, like, yeah. And I mentioned Joe Cap last week, too. Like all those guys. Anyways, let's talk about, uh, moving on up who's moving on up this week my my moving on up i'll start is uh sam darnold uh, sam darnold has um just been totally amazing uh i've moved him up in the rest of the season rankings up to number eight that's how good i think he's he's doing he's he's had quarterback finishes of 17 13 5 and this week one number one quarterback naturally of course he gets he ran in two touchdowns on his own but I mean, the record speaks for itself. He is just growing. And I would say he's, uh, if you want a priority grab, if he's still out there, uh, grab Sam Darnold. Uh, I know I'm looking to grab him. Especially. Yeah, yeah, I think you have to. Yeah. Because uh, my backup was, uh, was Teddy Bridgewater. So I'm going to drop him. And, and if Sam Darnold's still out there, I'm going to get him. Darnold's the man. So. Yeah, he's, yeah. Surprising how, how well he's playing without Adam Gase as a coach. Just saying. Makes yeah, a difference. Like the, He's a death knell and for offensive players, man. He's how he still how he has a job anywhere. So I, mean, I think now he's coaching high school somewhere, which is probably perfect for him. Mm-hmm. But anyways, uh yeah, Sam Darnold's playing out of his mind right now. He's playing really well. I mean he we have to be a little careful because I mean not he's not gonna run the ball, you know, uh rush down two rushing touchdowns every week, but no he's still playing you know, he's still throwing a couple three hundred yards a game, so um, yeah, he's somebody, if he's available, you know, get to grab him. You're right. He's not going to run every week because McCaffrey will come back. And that's kind of, a, he's kind of doing McCaffrey's job, really. Yeah, true. And, and yeah, so, I don't know why they don't trust, uh, they don't trust the, the you know, Chuba, Chuba Hubbard as much because he doesn't get the ball at the goal line, which is kind of surprising. Mm, you're right. It kind of hurts his value, you know, but yeah, if he's, if he's doing well, I mean, there's no, no reason to stop. Yeah, I think that's yeah. kind of that's an annoying vulture when 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 a quarterback scores. Yeah, uh, Brady used to do that all the time. His all one yard rushes at the goal line he used to be killer. Even when they had like Garrett Blunt was the running back there, and he was uh, he scored all those touchdowns that one year. They still had Brady run in like five or six, and it was, drove me nuts because he would always do that to me. I always thought he had a, had a good a good game, and then Brady comes in, runs two in, drives me nuts. Yeah, yeah I didn't I didn't list uh, my stock up guy, but I'm gonna come up with a guy. Somebody that I, I made fun of like for two weeks, mm-hmm. but uh, Cordell Patterson, three touchdowns. Come on, I know. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, know. Like, I, I, was, I saw that. I'm like, holy cow, what happened? I saw Matt Ryan was you know, he had three touchdown passes. I'm like, cool, maybe Ridley got one, and maybe Pitts finally scored. Oh no, all three to Cordell Patterson. <laughs> I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. This guy won't go away. I mean, he's no. he's hurting now. Everybody else on that team, you know, fantasy wise, but he's. I mean, they're making plays, and he's making plays for that team, and you gotta. You can't deny him the his the abilities uh, showing so far uh, this season. I, I mean, I always kind of thought of him as a good player, but not in this capacity. He's always been kind of good, like punt returner, like uh, kick returner, you know, like punts yeah. and kicks. I mean, he's a Swiss Army knife. I always kind of knew that. I mean, I've seen him used like ever since. Well, he came into the league with the Vikings, I believe, yeah, and I think so. Uh, so. But ever since that, he's you know he's floated around the league, and now he's finally found a spot where uh, a team is using him, and I've never seen him used so well. He's an amazing veteran, like. Uh, just just to be doing what he's doing and 30 fantasy points he was number one uh yeah, six crazy. rushes 34 yards 82 yards receptions of course and three touchdowns three as you say three touchdowns just uh yeah, yeah you're absolutely one. right yeah it does it does and uh why didn't i pick him up and, and of course who picks him up um our uh former podcaster of the fantasy edge is kevin <laughs> Oh yeah, yep. Kev, Kevin picked him up, and he and he played him, and of course, Kevin's just bulging with lots of fantasy points this week because uh, yeah, he picked it up, started him in the. I don't know if he's he might have even started him as the 
Uh, it's a flex, probably, but uh, boom. So right. nice, nice boom for you there. But uh, a good choice there, uh, Dennis, uh, for your stock up. All right, stock up, but uh, panic time. Who are we panicking about? Dennis will let you, why don't you start with the panic button? Yeah, it's um, actually something that correlates with Cordell Patterson. It's Mike Davis. I mean, he, he does not look good uh, rushing the ball, and he's not, uh, you know, making any headway uh, rushing the ball. And now Cordell Patterson is taking away some of the pass catching duties that we thought Davis was going to be part of. And one of the things that was, uh, was showed some upside for him coming into the season in the Atlanta offense. He's not doing any of that. And his rushing is, uh, he's only average like three yards a carry and he's, uh, not playing well. And Patterson's basically taking over, um, you know, his job more or less, which is kind of surprising. But, you know, with all the money that they paid him, uh, it'd be nice to, uh, he can a little bit more. And if you invested some draft capital, you're kind of hating Patterson right now. Uh, fantasy RB finishes of 33, 23, 31, and 29, even though he scored a touchdown at 13 carries, 14 rush yards. That's just pathetic. I mean, that, that touchdown basically just, uh, the only thing it did was just save your fantasy day, uh, 10 yeah. fantasy points there in half PPR. But I mean, 12 receiving yards and it's, it, 13 carries, 14 rush yards. It, <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah, you're right. You know, Dennis, it, Mike Davis, he's definitely, uh, yeah, the boat is sinking there. Don't want to have him. Uh, yeah, I liked him coming in the year too. So I was hoping he would do well, but. I mean, I see a nice RB2 to throw in your lineup in that offense because you figure to get the volume, but he's not getting that now. But uh, Patterson stepping up, so he's kind of useless. He's someone that you can get rid of now and be good if you yeah. can get anything for him. Uh, I completely agree. Danger, 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 danger. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the, the uh, lost in space robot. I got to get that. I got to get that clip. Danger, danger. <laughs> <laughs> you going to start playing it now? Yeah, I'm going to start it. playing. I'm going to find that one. I'm going to put it on the, we'll have it on the podcast. I might even dig it up and uh, in post-production, I'll, I'll put I'll put it in. So I'll leave a space here. Danger, danger. Right. <laughs> Sounds good. There we go. <laughs> uh, my, uh, my guy, my danger guy, uh, panic button guy, it's got to be Robert Woods. Um, I, I, this is kind of a mild panic button because we don't really, I mean, there's a, it's a long season to go, but right now, uh, Robert Woods is caught in a squeeze. I mean, he's had wide receiver finishes of 40, 45, 67, and this week 24, and he got a garbage ta- time touchdown, which kind of saved the week. He got 11 fantasy points out of it, but only 48 yards, and it seems like he's getting squeezed by uh, Cooper Cup and Van Jefferson, and it's it's kind of looking, if you're a Robert Woods owner, I don't like what I'm seeing. Yeah, I don't like it either, but I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't panic so much that I would I'd be giving up on him so quick. You know, I think he's, you know, Cooper gonna, teams are going to start trying to take away Cooper Cup and that's going to open things up for Woods. And that's, uh, if I was going to buy low on somebody, that's someone I'd buy low on in that offense. Um, that offense, you know, even though they didn't play well on Sunday against Arizona, they, they're high power offense. I think Sean McVay will scheme to get Woods open more. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't go sell the farm yet on Woods yet. But what about, but about, what about this Van Jefferson guy? He's, he's growing, oh, like he's that. growing in the, like, I mean, he's had his efficiency for catching, pat, I mean, 90 receiving yards, uh, touchdown, 15 fat, like against Tampa Bay, he only had 42 yards and he was a 62nd and he was a 92nd in the, in the second game of the season against the Colts. But, uh, but he's had, but it seems to me that Van Jefferson is really starting to, uh, He's the problem. He's the problem for Robert Woods. And, uh, um, and also, I think, I think you kind of got to add in Tyler Higby. I think Tyler Higby is another guy who's uh, a bit injured too. Yeah, I think he got injured that Sunday. Yeah. But he's been playing well as well. He's been another weapon for Stafford. I mean, they, the running game is not existent, so they have to pass a lot more. So, um, I mean, Ben Jensen, he, he was, he was one of the guys I, I was, you know, seeking as a deep sleeper. In my drafts this year, so I mean he's a good boy. He's a good ball player. He's going to be a weapon in that offense, especially as we get, um, you know, sort of taking a cup more. And, and Woods would be, um, you know, Woods is more of a you know intermediate passing guy. So when Jefferson is a big play guy, so I think you're going to see a lot of big plays from Jefferson as we get throughout the year. Yeah, uh, he's actually. <laughs> 
I've actually uh, stole my own thunder there because he's in my spec ads. So I'm yeah, <laughs> I got to pick another guy now. Yeah, you got to stop doing it to yourself. I got to stop doing that. I'm already getting ahead of myself. But anyways, into the waivers, we've got lots of guys that that, that to discuss, but uh, we only pick one each of uh, of the skill positions, except for quarterbacks. We sort of share that since there's so since there's so few. Um, let's start with tight ends. We always start with running backs. Why don't you start with tight ends? This week, Dennis, and and uh, who have you got uh, that you want to discuss about in tight end pickups? Yeah, I like um, Hunter Henry of uh, the Patriots. I think he, him, and uh, Johnny Smith are um, playing well right now. And you know, Matt Jones, as we talked about earlier, is uh, you know starting to come into his own. And I, I think uh, Hunter Henry is going to be a nice weapon for him uh, for Jones and uh, in New England. And as a tight end, and for streaming tight ends, he's a good matchup play. As someone I like to keep on my bench to. Uh, do matchups with yeah and uh also uh he like you mentioned john o smith uh mac jones is starting to find his uh his um tight ends is uh i mean they're tight ends you know they they work so well for uh for outlets, I mean, because they're you know they're short short passing games and they're, they're big and you can find them easy and so yeah uh, I think that's a I think that's a good uh, he's a good pickup for uh, for waivers this week and you know who I need to add I need to add this guy into my rest of season rankings I'm surprised I haven't got him I feel ashamed I'm gonna have to put him in and up <laughs> um, I'm gonna put him I'm gonna put him one slot at at. TE21, and this is Max Williams. I was kind of wrong about this guy before. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I think Max Williams is uh, an important for, I know, like, there are so many receivers. You've got AJ Green, you've got Christian Kirk, you've got uh, Rondale Moore in there, and of course, DeAndre Hopkins, and yet Max Williams. <laughs> Here's a guy that is a worthwhile pickup. Five of five, 66 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, Fourth, he's producing. Yeah. Uh, in, here's his tight end finishes. Week one, 58. Week two, number six. Uh, week three, 29th. And, uh, of course, I say number four this week. And, uh, Dennis, I think he's a, I think he's a guy that's, yeah, he's worth a pickup if your other, uh, tight end isn't doing anything i mean or you want a guy to stream he's a good guy to have on your bench for uh for a matchup where where where, where work i don't know i mean um the 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 games that he did well were against minnesota and of course the rams i think we i think it would still do good in in the san francisco game next week too yeah i think so yeah, he's you know, just when you think he wasn't going to do anything, you know, he produces again. And you know, we talked about him, I think, last week, and where I kind of said, you know, don't don't even think about it, and he shut me up by scoring again. So uh, I'm not going to doubt him again because he keeps producing. So <laughs> it might have <laughs> been it like, might have been me. I don't know. I was I was I was. I, was well, I agree with it. you. Either way, I remember I remember talking about him. I wasn't going to uh, you know pick him up. So yeah, uh, that was a bad call. Big streaming. Bad. uh option there definitely yeah agree. uh let's go to the wide receivers and i'm up and i'm gonna talk about uh i'm gonna be negative here uh like and i don't know why this guy is in the list he's uh wr8 <laughs> Kadarius tony now okay there are problems on the giants for receivers like sterling shepherd and darius slayton were out so i mean i've left uh, Kenny Galladay practically by himself and then there's Kadarius Tony and there's Colin Johnson I think his name is Colin with two L's but anyways <laughs> uh this uh this really I I really don't think you should make Kadarius Tony a it's just too much of a dart throw he's not even really I don't even consider him a dart throw I really uh, don't don't uh the backup Giants receivers really uh, it doesn't it doesn't excite me with with like there's upside there for some reason yeah I don't see I don't see why, uh, well, you know, first day, why did the Giants even select them was the whole thing in itself when they had, you know, they had a decent receiver group going into the season. Then they signed Galladay, which was, you know, I mean, that's a good pickup, I guess, but, um, yeah, I don't know why they drafted him, but I, I definitely find my fancy major on. He's available. I'm not even looking at him as an option because in that offense, they have, like you said, have too many mouths to feed there. And there's, and Daniel Jones is, you know, hit or miss. And I'm, I wouldn't waste my, uh, my fab on my waiver priority on Tony. 
No, and uh, I, he's actually owned in our F6P league, and uh, so I mean, yeah, he's he's just he's got to be he's got to be a pickup only in the deepest of leagues. But even so, even so, I mean, yes, nine targets, six receptions, seventy-eight yards, and eight fantasy points for the you know he comes back as the thirty-third receiver of the week, which is you know reasonable, but not reasonable enough to expect to cons. To expect consistency here, right? Very yeah, much how often is that going to happen? I don't see, no. I don't see it being a consistent thing, like you said. So, uh, so I pick a negative guy for uh, for that's on the list, and he's WR eight by the experts. I don't know why the experts. I completely disagree that Kadarius Tony should be on this list at WR eight. I would much rather have Van Jefferson, who's who they've got ranked at WR seventeen. Yeah, keep mentioning your guys again. Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> and no, well, I mean, no, I'm I'm talking guys that are behind him here. I know, I'm just kidding. Sorry. Yeah, I know, but Khalif Raymond and uh, Randall Cobb, you know, those yeah. guys are Quintus, even Quintus Cephas. I take him. Yeah, I agree. I like, yeah, I like Tim. He did a good game uh, on Sunday. So yeah, just, a, lot, a lot more options better than him. I mean, even I take the chance with uh, Rashad Bateman when he's coming back. You know, uh, yeah, I wouldn't like continue to be like the last guy I even think about. Uh, Rashad but, Bateman. Yeah. I like him. I mean, he's, he's a good player. I was, had to see what he does. Um, you know, Lamar Jackson is starting to throw a little bit more. And, you know, Marquis Brown has actually caught the ball for once. And he caught a nice touchdown. Um, and, you know, that offense, I mean, if they ever get a semi passing game there, it'd be tough to beat. Mm-hmm. Well, he hasn't played yet this season. So um, no, it's, it's a stash. Worth a hope. stash, though. Yeah, he's worth a stash. Okay. Uh, who are you talking about on uh, wide receiver? I got uh, Curtis Samuel. Yeah, he made his first appearance in the game on Sunday. So I have four targets on a, on 12 routes and he could be a valuable weapon in Washington, you know, aside with, uh, Terry McLaurin and now with, uh, Logan Thomas possibly out with the hamstring injury. Um, we could see Samuel, you know, take part of that intermediate game that uh, Thomas is good at. So, and, uh, the way Tyler Henke is playing, I wouldn't mind having Samuel on my, my, on my team. I, you know, I, I don't know about that. About whether Samuel, because Logan is out, it gives Samuel, because look, I mean, Samuel's a little guy and Logan's a big guy. I, I think it actually goes to, I think it goes to Cam Sims. I think Cam Sims gets a little bit more involvement. Yeah, I think they didn't pay him all that money. Not he's, to, he's, he's the big not to boy. Get him right? the ball. I'm sorry. Because they kind of use him as a sort of receiver, tight end receiver, Cam Sims, when, you know, but I think that kind of helps Cam Sims getting a little bit more, maybe a little bit more, uh, sight, but I, I don't know, but you mentioned Tyler Heineke. He's, he's another guy. He's like Darnold. He's, I, I don't think, I don't think they go back to Fitzpatrick. I don't think so either. I mean, he's not playing. You know, great, uh, NFL wise, but fantasy wise, he's, he's phenomenal. He's putting up points like crazy. And I picked him up in, uh, in, uh, Scott Fishbowl, you know, mm-hmm. raking in the points with him, you know. So, I mean, yeah, you know, I don't care what he does otherwise. As long as he keeps putting up points, I'll keep, I'll keep throwing him in my lineup. He's, uh, had quarterback finishes of 29, 12, 10, and 5. QB 5 yeah. this week. Nice. That's crazy. Very yeah, for nice. a guy you just pick up. <laughs> yeah, that is. That's good. That's good for you, Dennis. Um, where are we, where are we at now? Uh, now yeah, we're what talking you, what running you got at running back? Yeah, I'm gonna talk. We've never talked about this guy, uh, Kenneth Gainwell. I don't know. If, I doubt if he's available anymore. I mean, he's been uh, he's been on the waiver board here for the for fantasy pros for almost ever since one. Ah, yeah, I, you could almost kind of like take a panic button on 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 Sanders because Gainwell is slowly, surely taking over. Um, Sanders' role, like, I mean, if you look at, uh, if you look at Sanders and his record here, I'll just get that up. It is, um, he's had finishes of 16 in week one. Nice. And then, uh, RB36, RB40, and then RB44 for Miles Sanders. So, yeah, I could have even had Miles Sanders in the, in, uh, for owners. Cause I mean, where you drafted Miles Sanders, this isn't looking good, Dennis, but it is no. looking good if you're a Kenneth Gainwell owner. Who's had fantasy finishes of 20, 42, 46, and, uh, and this week 11th. Got a second touchdown of the year, and Miles Sanders hasn't had one yet. I, I love uh, Kevin, Kenneth Gainwell. He's he was one of the backs I was hoping to get. Um, rookie drafts this year. 
And when you, Brother Tetsushita, I saw him pick, I was hoping he was, you were going to pick him so I could pick him. <laughs> but uh-huh. it's really fine. We can still talk about him. Yeah, he's, he's one of the better receiving backs in the, in the draft. And somehow he, somehow he slipped to the fifth round and Eagles got lucky and got him. And like I said, he's more or less taking over for Sanders and Sanders has been a huge disappointment. And hope, I was hoping, uh, you know, you know, draft him, uh, too early in the drafts. All right. So, uh, last guy uh, for uh, for us to choose, uh, Europe running yeah, back got, uh, that you want to talk I, about. I, I want to talk about uh, Daryl Williams at Kansas City. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's a he's a great handcuff to uh, uh, to CEH, and I think you know even though CEH has uh, picked up his game since they lost that fumble, and we too, but uh, uh, Williams is a central handcuff to him, especially the way he was playing uh, in the last year and this year. He's he's a stuff that we scored on Sunday. Is someone that um, I like to have on my back of my roster just in case, um, you know, he gets, uh, CH gets hurt or he starts, you know, has another fumble because they trust Williams and he's always in, at the end of the games, he's always in the game. So I think my chance is Daryl Williams is back into my roster. Couldn't agree more. In fact, if you don't get Damian Williams or Samaja Pirine or Kenneth Gainwell, I mean, those guys are hard to get uh, right now. I mean, Kenneth Gainwell is probably, I don't know the uh, ownership. Uh, I think he's got to be over 50% owned by now. So you're, uh, if you're looking at guys, uh, I, I would completely agree. If you can't get uh, the cream of the crop, there is these, there are some good running backs you can sneakily pick up. And, uh, and the experts have Tom Montgomery at RB60. <laughs> <laughs> I don't go Why? that. Don't go. Don't go that. <laughs> I don't ask me. I like. I don't do the waiver. I'm not involved in the waiver. Uh, I could be if I wanted to, but I don't put my put my name in. I rank enough stuff as it is. <laughs> uh, honestly, it is. don't don't you find ranking to be like a real chore sometimes? No, <laughs> uh, well, especially on Sunday when you're you know they come with the inactives and stuff. And then eleven thirty. Then you're you know eleven thirty Eastern time. Um, I'm scrambling, trying to figure out who's in, who's out, changing my lineups real quick, and changing all the rankings and everything. It's yeah, it gets a little hectic, but I mean, it's it's fun. But it's you know, you have to make sure you check all the news and make sure everyone's starting that you want to start and check everybody out of the rankings before you get a big fat zero for them in the rankings. So. Yeah. So okay, um, now that we gotta we gotta talk about guys to drop. If you want to pick up guys, you gotta drop guys. Um, I already uh, since. Um, I kind of used up uh, Tassan Williams. He's one guy to drop, but I, I have to pick another one. I'll pick uh, uh, Tony Jones Jr. of the Saints. He's had RB finishes of 40, 76, 58, 58. He's not really, he's not really doing the Latavius Murray role. It's all, uh, you know, it's all Alvin Kamara. And he's not getting, he's just not getting much. He's not worth keeping, I don't think, anymore. I mean, you might have thought he was, he was a good stash at one time, but I think you dump Tony Jones. If you, if you have him, just don't, there's no point in keeping him anymore. Yeah. That, uh, the Saints offense is, uh, not looking so good. I, I would even be, you know, if I'm a Camaro owner, I send out some feelers for trading him away too, if I could, because I, I don't have any faith in that offense right now. No. You get somebody good for him. Uh, there's, I would. there's no, there's no receiver you can trust. No. There's, they're all sleepers. Basically. Yeah, right. Um, and, and Winston's on and off, so you can't really trust him. I mean, he did well that one week, but that, obviously that was fluky. And so, and Camaro, he'll get the ball, he'll get the volume, but how much is he going to produce? I mean, he had 100 yards, but I don't think he even caught a pass on Sunday. Yeah, that's, that's what right. he's, you know, I mean, that's what he's known for. That's what you drafted him, so he can be a PPR monster and make those big plays, but he can't do that if he's rushing the ball, you know, 20 times and not doing anything else. Well, it's like you say, you know, you, you, when when we have a, um, when you have an RB1, you, you just can't have an RB1 that's boom and bust. Okay, um, Alvin Kamara got 120 yards against the, the Giants, but they were scoreless yards. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, and of course, as you, you know, the Giants win the game. <laughs> no. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. That is weird. Yeah, that but, was one game I did. That that game and uh, the Rams and Cardinals game, I got totally wrong. I thought I thought the Rams would um, you know, at least stay with uh, Cardinals, but Cardinals just blow them out of off the field. I was surprised by that. All right, Dennis, who are you gonna? Who do you think we should drop? Yeah, I'm going back. To, I don't know if I mentioned his name before, but uh, Brandon Ayuk of San Francisco. Huh. We had the one good game, and now with Trey Lance looking to start, um, it often changes dramatically with, with Lance at the helm. I mean, he's, Lance is more like a Jalen Hurts type of player. Can't really throw the ball, but his rushing ability gives him an advantage for fantasy managers. But for passing, he hurts all, he hurts all the receivers out there. So 
Um, I would get rid of uh, Ayuk. I uh, finished as a WR89 this week, of course. <laughs> but I, but like say, uh, like Trey Lance, like you say, he's got a lot of a learning curve to go on that. Well, I, I really don't think Garoppolo was that injured. He didn't really look injured to me. They said he had no, a calf no. injury, but I, I like what I saw from Trey Lance. I like that shiftiness that, uh, you know, the way, he, you know, he slides out of the, he's, he's very, I like his shiftiness. It's, it's good. It's good. And he's, and his, uh, his passing, you know, he throws it like a dart. I kind of, I like that. I like his style. I like, uh, it's very interesting yeah. style, Trey Lance. Yeah, he's going to be a playmaker. I mean, he's, like I said, he's like that Jalen Hurts, you know, yeah, Justin Fields kind of type of player. You know, they'll make some big plays. I mean, he won't be a very accurate passer, but, you know, he'll get big plays, make plays for your fantasy team, you know, create some havoc out there for defenses. Mm. And, uh, of course, the big winner in, uh, the big, Big own the best own right now. I think a guy, and I could actually put him on a moving on up because I think moving up into the elites is Debo. Uh, Debo yeah. Samuel, well, yeah, he's he just was an awesome guy. Yeah, I like that type of yeah. player too because he's kind of he's a bit of a Swiss Army knife too because you can run him out of the backfield, you know. Like these guys like Guyton and LaVisca Chanel, like those type of guys, right? Right. I mean, he had that fluky bomb, but then that one play he had at the. Uh... In the, I mean, in the, in the red zone when he ran through like three players to get a touchdown, that was, that was awesome to watch. I mean, that, that's hard goes football there. Like, and that's why I say, like, if, if Jalen Guyton, like, he's, he's playing in the game tonight. He's, he's having a good game, I think, in, in, uh, tonight on Monday Night Football. But if he got traded to the right team, he'd be just like those guys. Yeah, he's, he's a phenomenal athlete. Yeah, he's awesome. Uh, okay. Um, spec ads, uh, like I mentioned Van Jefferson enough. So I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to go with this Khalif Raymond of, of the, uh, of Detroit. Now I know Quintus Cephas seems to be mm, sort of the number one, but Khalif Raymond uh, seems to be a favorite of Jared Goff right now. So I'm going to put him as a, as a spec ad. If you, uh, have room, um, I, I quite, I quite like the player. I've been watching him play and, uh, he and Quintus Cephas are, um, uh, almost like 1A and 1B really. So, uh, I, I, I would definitely, uh, pick up, uh, Khalif Raymond, if you got room, he's definitely worth a stash. So he's a spec ad for me. Yeah, I like that pick. I mean, he's, he's, a um, you know, you know that they're going to get the, he's, they're going to be passing a lot over there with that, with that defense they have. So he's, he's worth the pick of this year. Who do, who are you going to spec? Um, uh, I'm going to do, uh, Freddie Swain of Seattle. Hmm. I think he's secured a third receiver job in Seattle. And, uh, you know, Russell Wilson throwing the ball, you can't start to beat that. And the way he creates plays on his own, like he did on that touchdown yesterday. Um, you know, I, I like the piece of that offense. So I think Freddie Swain, I mean, he's, he's been playing well and he has, uh, He's going to get a lot of the snaps there now, so I think he's he's worth the pickup. Snaps. Yeah, Swain, uh, just taking a look at his uh, record here. He is, um, he's got uh, first week, didn't do anything, <laughs> WR117, and then WR8 in week two, would you believe it? Uh, <laughs> WR88 in week three, and uh, just this weekend against San Francisco, of course, he scored again. Uh, only four targets, three receptions, 20 yards. He did score the touchdown and uh 31 uh th- good for 31st in the wide receiver department so you're right i i i, I think freddie swain yeah he's uh the experts have him at wr 22 in the waiver ranking suite and uh so i, I tend to agree with that other names uh that are uh, that are in here just briefly john ross uh <laughs> I can't trust him. <laughs> no. I would put I would put a negative. And and Deontay Harris, we talked about the Saints offense. Just can't. It's boom bust there. The, anything anything on the Saints is boom bust. Really. Right. Uh, hey, what about your uh, What about Orlando Cobb for the Packers? Are you the Packers um, You know, you bring up an interesting point there because Rogers likes him. Obviously, he's one of the guys, and, and he targeted him twice for touchdowns. But you know, he's not. Devontae Adams is the focal point of the offense. I think the only thing that Randall Cobb is doing is that he's hurting Alan Lazard. Yeah, uh, yeah he is. Well, MVS I, is out. MVS yeah. and, and, yeah, you're right. MVS is obsolete now, too. So Yeah, and, yeah so I mean, he took over those those uh, targets. And like you said, he loves uh, Randall Cobb. He made sure they brought him over. So, yeah, um, you know, he was going to use us. He see this year because Rodgers is a little bit an idiot bringing him over or not. 
not playing him, not having produced. So you know he's going to produce. So he's not bad in super deep leagues if you want to take a shot with him in a right matchup. But when you get other guys out, like MBS is out. Um, kind of worth a shot, I guess. But definitely, yeah. So uh, yeah, it's but it's basically the offense. That I mean, Rogers runs through you know Jones, Adams, Tunyon. Of course, Cobb now is is back in the fold. So there we are. Uh, well, that's the end of the show. <laughs> What's at the end of the show? Any thoughts going in? Any <laughs> thoughts going into week five? We're supposed to talk about something, weren't we? We've kind of run over uh, time, but that's okay. No, we're going to talk about, I'll just talk about Big Ben. Which, oh, right. Yeah. A little bit more about Big yeah. Ben. Yeah, because he was, yeah, try to stay away from those Steelers if you can't. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, unless your name's Harris. I really have to say, I think, I think we're going to see Mason Rudolph sooner. Yeah, because, sometime. Uh, yeah. So, sooner than later, unfortunately. I don't really trust Mason Rudolph, but he's better than Ben right now, I'd have to say. He's, yeah, he's more, so. I mean, Mason Rudolph, Mason Rudolph, basically, he doesn't harm anything in the, in the, in the offense, but, uh, but, but what you said earlier makes a lot of sense about that offense line and that Steelers really need to work on, right. uh, on gelling. You figure they would too, because, you know, Ben, he's that, he has never been that bold to begin with, and now, you know, last couple of years, he's, there's like a statue back there. He's not moving, so they should they should protect him better. Know that he can't move, you know. But they didn't they didn't do anything to prove his lie. You know, that's pretty sad. No, right. I'm not a Steelers fan, so I can feel that. I hate the Steelers. <laughs> Since oh, I'm a Browns fan, I hate the of course you would. Of course you would. <laughs> and, and you probably hate Mason Rudolph too. Then. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. My family. <laughs> of my family's are like Steelers fans, so I got to hear about it all the time. But I got bad to him last year in the playoffs. I finally got some one up on him when the Browns beat him, so I was happy. <laughs> I got one at least. For one year, I can talk shit. That's cool. <laughs> that's, uh, that's the show for this week. Thanks for joining us on the Fantasy Edge. And be sure to check out uh, the Blurb View, which is my article. And Dennis comes out with his stock up and stock down. Uh, what day does that come out? Wednesday, is it, Dennis? Wednesday. And Wednesday. we also do... Uh, we also do the bulletin board too, which is a weekly wrap up of every division. I do oh. the AFC North, and we have a bunch of writers that do, um, you know, each division. There's a writer that takes care of all four teams over the week. Week's news that also preview the, the following week. So check that out too. That comes out on Wednesdays as well. All right. So all right. Yeah. So check out all these articles and the other writers at fantasy 6 Thank you, everybody, and we'll see you next week on Fantasy Edge. Take care. <laughs>